helicopter. I love your helicopter. Are you going to get the turtle? <gasps> Because our toddler, <laughs> Heartless, is an absolute whirlwind. Clouds. What else might we see up in the plane? <laughs> Sharky. What about this one? Oh, crab. Good job. What about this one? A turtle. <laughs> Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time you guys are watching this. I'm super excited to be sharing this episode with you today where I'm going to be talking about our upcoming 24-hour flight with our toddler and the things that we're packing in our bag to be able to support him on the plane because our toddler, <laughs> Heartless, is an absolute whirlwind. Um, so I know that you guys who have been following us now for a couple of weeks since we've started this channel have possibly no idea that we're about to travel to Greece because I couldn't talk about it in earlier videos because it's a humongous surprise for my brother and some friends of mine laughed at me because they were like you're never gonna pull off this surprise you're starting a YouTube channel like you're on social media all the time and I'm like I'm going to nail this I'm still hopeful that we're gonna nail this I literally was just on the phone to him the other day and I was like oh, I'm so jealous about your upcoming Greece trip he has no idea that we're meeting him there and it's gonna be a really, really special trip for our family because we haven't seen my brother in a year and my brother and I are like incredibly close. Like he's one of my best friends and he hasn't seen Atlas now since he was six months old. And I know that's really hard for him. So it's gonna be like, it's gonna be an incredible surprise, um, which I'm hoping I'm possibly gonna film the whole um, encounter so you guys will get to share in that as well. Um, also, just side note, anyone else think my shirt is the coolest thing in the whole entire world? So I know that I have like, um, since becoming pregnant made a real shift to um, consciously purchase clothing and like because of that, um, a lot of my clothes are like naturally dyed, natural materials. But I promised some of my best friends that we would have a girls day the other day and we did and they love op shopping and I've barely ever gone op shopping. And so anyway, we all went op shopping together, left all our kids at home and went op shopping and I loved it and I love this top. And maybe that's weird, I don't know, but I was like, as soon as I picked up the, the video today, just like, as soon as I decided I was gonna do some filming, I was like, I'm wearing my new favorite top. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make some chai, um, we're gonna take it outside, and I'm gonna go through the backpack that we're packing with um, for Atlas for on the plane. And I've chatted to quite a few moms who do like a lot of full-time travel. Um, I've gone into a whole bunch of different toy shops and chatted to them about like things that they um, recommend. And also just from the perspective of myself as a trained occupational therapist, I'm going to share some of the, um, the things about some of the things that have, <laughs> the toys that I've chosen to have on the plane. All right, guys, I'll catch you in a moment. My like number one item that, that I'm packing for Atlas um, is probably one of the easiest ones to pack for kids and that's a comfort toy for Atlas. <laughs> a lot of you already know it's Koala um, and I've had parents reach out to me and say oh but my child doesn't have a comfort toy and for us Atlas didn't have one either like <laughs> I was really his comfort person um, but there are ways that you can go about, if it's something that you want your child to have, there's ways that you can go about encouraging them to form attachments to items. So some kids just do it naturally and other kids, like for us, Atlas was studying kindy one day a week and I really wanted him to have something to take with him that could provide a lot of comfort for him. And so probably uh, maybe a month before he started kindy, I just started really like offering koala all the time. So I would do things like, Oh, we're leaving the house. I'm like, oh, does Koala want to come? Or if he was having a meal, I'd be like, oh, does Koala want to eat some? And then, like, probably within a week, Koala was his, like, baby. Um, and the reason that I think that this is, like, a really important thing on the plane is on planes, there are going to be moments where children don't have any control. 
there are going to be moments, I mean, they essentially don't have control whether they want to get on the plane for one, and they're going to, like, a very new and different situation, but for kids that, like, have never done it before, there's going to be times when they have to sit in their seat, that they can't be running around, that they have to have their seatbelt on, and it's times like that that I find comfort toys really, really useful, and I term them more as, like, the children's babies, because they get to have control over their babies. They might not have control over what's happening to them, but they have control over their comfort toys. So in situations where um, a child might be distressed because um, they have to stay still and they have to put a seatbelt on, you can be like, oh, koala needs his seatbelt on. Can you put koala's seatbelt on? Um, oh, there's a trolley coming. It's really noisy. Do you think we can cover koala's ears? Or like um, another example might be, oh, koala looks really tired. And we do this at home. Like we've been night weaning, as you guys know. Um, and we do things like, oh, koala looks really tired. I think koala wants a cuddle to go to sleep tonight. Oh, can you pack koala for me? Um, and so that's ways that kids can be in control over something when they don't have control over themselves. Um, so koala is the first thing <laughs> that's going in Atlas's backpack. Number two, um, one that I wanted to share with you guys that I we've got for on the plane, but it's actually been a really, really useful preparation um, toy. And ours comes in like this super cute little box, great fine motor opening the box, and it is a airport. Um, it all folds out. We got it for the plane, but what I wanted to share with you guys, and I'm going to um, flash over and you guys can see how Atlas plays with it, um, but there's little aeroplanes in it. Um, and you can just buy like, you could just buy a little aeroplane. Um, for us, we, Atlas doesn't have very many toys. Um, we do a lot of nature play and I have always been really conscious not to have too many toys around the house and also not to have too much plastic. So for us, we really want to buy, like when I decide that I want to buy an aeroplane to talk to him about what we're doing in the sky and things like that, for me, I wanted it to be wood. But for you guys, like whatever, whatever works. Um, so we just have like this little aeroplane, it's got a runway and we have been doing some stories around like going on the plane. So we've been talking about like that we're going to get on the plane and there's going to be mummy and daddy and that we're going to fly um, and then we're going to see the clouds and some of the things for him to expect on the flight. So with children, especially young children, the way that they process any sorts of traumas and when I use the word trauma, I'm dogs are going crazy um when i say the word trauma i'm not talking about like catastrophic life events i'm just saying like anything that can impact a child the way that they often process that using both parts of their brain is through script and through storytelling and so i know anyone who's watching this probably has kids that something's happened to them they might have had a fall um something might have happened at kindy and they'll come back and they'll be telling the story over and over and over again and um part of that is like cementing it into their brain um yeah, and processing it. And so having little toys or having like visuals or having um, a book that they can read about an aeroplane journey just puts a bit of a story around something that hasn't happened yet. Plane. Have you got a plane? Can mommy see your plane? Oh, you got a plane. Red. How, where does a plane go? Uh, up in the sky. Do you know Atlas we're going in a plane when we go to Greece? We're going to fly in a plane all the way to Greece. Oh look there's mummy and daddy and look there's Atlas. We're in a plane. Dada. Yeah daddy's in the plane. <laughs> For us, books in our house are huge. Atlas adores reading. So for us, we're definitely packing books. And I think when it comes to um, being on a plane with books, we want to think of a couple of things. One is the size that it's going to take up. And one I think is like the usability. So do you use the book for just reading or do you use it for different activities? Um, and I'm going to show you our favorite book one of our favorite books, Imagine, and show you some of the activities that we can really do with that. Um, but another thing worth considering, Atlas hasn't been like someone who's torn pages um, for a long time. So we have paper books, um, but if you have toddlers that like to rip pages, then obviously you guys are mums, like <laughs> I advise you guys to have a couple books. But let me show you how this works. Okay, so this book, Imagine, is particularly amazing, I think, because the pictures in it 
have got so much going on and there's all these different animals in it there's so many animals in it that I don't know but all the different animals that are found in the picture are written all around the outside so part of the book so there's the story that runs throughout it but every second page is all these animals and some of the things that you can do with your kids is like depending on their um, level and comprehension you can do like oh can you find me something green or can you find me something blue one of the things that Atlas loves at the moment is because he's learning so many new words each day, he loves learning new animals. And so him and Patrick have been doing like a lot of these animals around here. Um, Atlas will point to a nose and he tells me and I like literally have no idea. But the cool thing about this book, I'm just going to show you at the back because let's face it, I don't know <laughs> one million different animals, but at the back, they have the shapes from the page and it has listed all the different names so you can flick forward and backwards and actually find the names of the animals to talk to your kids about um, and this book like just provides Atlas with so much entertainment um, so we've actually taken this out of his collection for the last month so he hasn't really looked at it over the last month so when I bring it back on the plane it will be like a little bit of I guess a surprise for him um, as well. Okay guys, the next one is a favorite of mine. Um, Atlas hasn't seen this yet and I think that he will love it. Um, I will be completely straight up that I don't think this is as eco-friendly as a lot of the other options that I have, um, mainly because it does have um, a little plastic component on it. Um, but this is something that I use in therapy all the time to get children more excited about writing or having something in their hand. So what it is, is it's this little um, plastic device. The bottom actually just fills up with water and you click it together and it's got a little paintbrush on the end. This, where you can't see anything on it and you use this little device, which is just water, and you can put the water across the card, across the white patches, and it reveals something. So for example, this one's a butterfly, as you can see, as you wipe across it, more is revealed. Now, the thing that's particularly cool about these is that as soon as the um, water dries, they go back to being white again. And kids, absolutely love these and the things that are really cool about these is like obviously I'm not like with my one and a half year old talking about well maybe not obviously maybe some people do we're not we're not so much talking about the letters um, but we're talking about the animals so we are looking at them going oh what can you find and um, looking at what the animals are under it we might be doing like talking about the animal noises like oh what sound does that one make or when was the last time you saw a cow for example or um, yeah just more of a conversation prompter but I honestly think that Atlas will love this <laughs> Something else that um, works great on planes, which wasn't actually like my first thought, but when I popped into a toy shop and was chatting to someone, they were like, magnets. Magnets are the best thing on the planes because um, one, you're not gonna lose the pieces, they stick together, um, you don't have any too many pieces, and there's lots of magic that can be done with magnets these days. So we have a couple of things um, that all kind of revolve around magnets. So one of them, pretty simple, the old Etch-a-Sketch. So this one we just got from our local toy shop. It's cardboard. It's got a very thin magnet part in it. It's tiny um, and it will just slot in between a couple of things. And Atlas can do um, a little bit of drawing on it. Atlas is not a kid that loves drawing. Um, he doesn't mind it, but it's not like one of his kind of go-to activities. So when I, we might take a couple of um, crayons on the plane and we've got some stickers and a sticker book, um, but we don't really have a lot of drawing things because I know that it's not gonna entertain him. Um, but if you have a child who loves drawing, then go ahead and pack those. And one of the therapists at work actually, when I was chatting to her about this, one of the things that she suggested was the like tripod grip. 
um, crayons or pencils, the ones that are like triangles. And the reason that she suggested this is because she's like, when the plane is moving, if there's any sort of turbulence, the round ones tend to roll off. Whereas if you have a triangle one and it's on its flat edge, it's less likely to roll off. So there's a good tip for you. Um, another thing that we got that uses magnets um, is this little number. And I will, um, I'll show you how this one works. I think it's really cool. And funny enough, um, when I saw it in the shops, I hadn't realized, but when I got it home, it actually has a plane symbol on it. Like, that's pretty cool. Okay guys, let me show you what I love so much about this. One is that it's just super simple, super simple to open. It, if you see it from the side, when you open it, it's like a, um, an a it's angled so things don't fall off it. And what it is pretty much is like there's different parts of a whole bunch of different animals and they magnetize on a background. And if you can see down here, we've got all kinds of trees and other things to put on. So the way that we will be using this is one just for the sake of it being like magnets that he can just stick on um, and play with. And the other thing that we can do with it is use it as a background for stories that we're creating for him. So we can tell him stories using different um, animals that we pop up on there um, that he can watch. Kind of like, I guess, the moving TV. Because the other thing about Atlas is he doesn't watch barely any screens. So we can't really rely on screen time. The other really cool thing about... Um, this activity for older kids is it comes with a whole bunch of cards that you can give kids to get them to replicate the pictures um, but I think it's really cool to like get them to create their own things um, it does say on it that it's three plus and my guess is that the reason for that is around the size of some of the pieces and like them being like swallowing hazards obviously you need to work with your own child. Atlas doesn't put anything in his mouth um, anymore um, and also he's going to be supervised like we're all going to be together so for us the three plus I mean I feel very confident with him having it and he's um, one and a half so yeah that's that one um, it's a sm like quite a small square so it will fit very easily on the front tray so yeah I'm actually really really looking forward to playing this one so another thing that, well, the last thing that we got that was also a magnet um, is your typical, like, I guess it's kind of like a go fish game. Um, ours has got like little wooden pieces um, and the thing that I love about this, Atlas loves this, which you can see here. Turtle. Are you going to get the turtle? Oh, you got it's it, so tricky. Uh... A turtle crab. Daddy, you got the star, good job. What's daddy going to get Bubba? Um, the thing that I love about these is that from a, I guess like developmental perspective, at kind of like one and a half, kids are starting to like use cutlery and really um, enjoying the use of tools, but it's also still very challenging. And so when we incorporate something like the fishing rod game where the, um, the string, <laughs> It's not fixed to the handle. It really makes everything a lot more challenging um, So if you're if you are playing it with your child and then Completely missing it one of the things that you can do is you can either hold the string So when they're holding the handle you can hold the string and help it down or you can lift the crab or whatever it is up to the bottom of their magnet just so that you're really setting them up for success so they're getting really excited about it all um, and much like what I was saying about the magnet game this is very similar in that like with the pieces you can have conversations about what they are so like when they get something like what is it oh what do they do like Atlas always when he has a crab he's like snap 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 <laughs> sharky what about this one? Oh, crab good job what about this one a turtle. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, so like what do they do? Like oh, what colour is it if you're doing colours? Um, how many can you cat? Like how many things can you catch all at once? Um, when was the last time you saw a crab? Um, yeah like you know having more of a conversation around those things. Um, and 
the thing that I really recommend with plain toys, a friend of mine did a long haul flight not that long ago and she wrapped up a whole bunch of her daughter's things that she already had so she's been playing with them for months and she just took out like the last month before the flight she took them out and then she wrapped them all up um, and gave them to her as presents to kind of like gave a bit of that excitement back and so we're doing something similar so I so I we all <laughs> In our house, we use Who Gives a Crap toilet paper, which is like the best thing ever. If you've never used it, get onto it. Um, but they have like, they all come like in like wrapping paper and I've just collected a whole bunch of the wrapping from the toilet rolls and what I'm just going to do is tonight I'm just going to wrap all Atlas's presents up with the toilet paper um, just so it just adds another level to entertain him for. So I feel like I've gone completely over the top because like, as I said before, like we don't, Atlas has barely any toys. Like I think on this plane, he probably is now gonna have more toys here than he does in our whole entire house, really. Um, and it feels like I've gone overboard, but at the same time, I'm like, it's 24 hours. And our son is like one of those kids that's just like run, 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 up and down, up and down. So I just envision for us, like, hopefully we all sleep at the start of the flight. So another thing that was recommended to me is that when you book a flight, you always book the biggest leg at nighttime. So you get on and sleep for as much of it as possible. Um, and I guess my only concern about that is having Atlas sleeping on me in a small space if I don't get good sleep, like, I, I like, I'm a mom, good sleep is like a couple of hours, but if I don't get that, like, I'm gonna be nasty. <laughs> and I don't wanna be nasty, I don't. Um, and I feel like there's only so, only so many hours that Patrick can be doing laps up and down um, the plane with Atlas, and like, obviously we'll be taking turns, so, yeah, I just, I feel like I just wanna pack a bag full of things to, hopefully entertain him but I think that we did really well I think that we have a great mix of things I think that this video is going to be a very very fascinating comparison to the one that we film actually on the plane um but yeah I um I was just about to say that I'm really looking forward to it I'm so looking forward to this trip like I don't even really have words for it just yet. Um, but I am definitely a little apprehensive about this flight. But I feel like it's just gonna be a beautiful learning experience. And yeah, just taking it one day, like just taking it hour by hour. Um, we've got plenty of food packed. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited. <laughs> So they're the top things that we're packing for Atlas. So comfort toy, books that are more than just books. Books that can create interest, whether it's like I Spy or conversations around the pictures um, or can be told in multiple different ways or are interactive for kids. Um, a Some sort of device that can help you to support your child to um, know what's coming with the flight. So for us, I feel like the aeroplane toys are really good for that, um, to create the story and to support him to know what is coming. But you can do that, depending on where your child is at as well, like you can do that just with conversation. And we've done a lot of the conversation as well. Um, just the plane has been really, I guess it's been really fun for us too, and showing him an airport and what a plane looks like when it takes off. Um, magnetic toys amazing 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 um, and then like just if you choose to wrapping the presents up so that it gives that other element to it so it feels like they get a bit of that like specialness of like if you guys do Christmas or if you do birthday presents like they get a bit of that like oh we're doing something really special right now um, so yeah I'm really really excited to see how they all go down who knows we may have another video of the flight and it'll <laughs> <laughs> could look completely different um, but maybe it won't and I am so so looking forward to this holiday like seeing my brother is gonna be 
Oh, the most incredible thing and oh my god Greece like I feel like I haven't even sunk into the fact that we're going to Greece I just have been trying to prepare for the flight and trying to get Atlas ready and then like thinking about seeing my brother and I haven't even really thought about the fact that like we're gonna be traveling around Greece it is gonna be so beautiful um, and yeah I guess when it comes to the flight and having like a crazy active little guy the way that I'm just really like trying to embody it is that we just take it hour by hour and yeah it might be hard it probably is going to be hard we're probably not going to get a huge amount of sleep but it's just we'll just take it hour by hour and at the end of it we get an incredible holiday so yeah and like to share it with you guys which is pretty freaking awesome as well all right guys i cannot wait i like looking at you guys i'm like our next video is literally going to be grace like don't even know what or where or like how but it's going to be like us taking you around Greece which is going to be amazing so I cannot wait for that and um yeah I'll talk to you guys soon all right big love everyone bye hey <laughs> you to come up come on bye bye everyone we'll see you in Greece yeah bye, bye. I'm okay <laughs> see you in Greece bye